Hi guys, thanks for joining the channel today. My name's Tim and I'm going to be talking to you about eight things you might want to consider about the Peter McKinnock Nomadic 35 litre camera backpack before you purchase it. For a couple of things I want to say before I start this video. First of all, I think Peter's a decent kind of, kind of guy. He's obviously been successful at what he does and I don't blame him trying to, or not trying, but actually creating some of his own brand, branded products. He's, I've certainly learned a lot from other videos that I've watched that he produces. And so this is not, if I, if I sound negative at times, it, it's nothing to do with the way I feel about Peter. He's, like I say, I think he's a decent guy. The second thing is I bought this bag and that's not to say that it's not sponsored. That's not the point. I, I'm just saying that, you know, when I talk about some of the aspects of this that I don't think are very good, you know, you might, some people might want to comment, Tim, why did you even make this video? Why didn't you just send the bag back? Well, the reason is it is a good bag. It does f serve a function and actually, I was thinking about sending it back and my wife told me into keeping it so that's why I still have it. And, and last but not least, I paid $575 for this and that was with a $100 discount because I bought all of the accessories to go with it except the rain cover which quite frankly I think they could have thrown in but never mind. So with that being said, if you find this uh, useful, you know, we'd really appreciate it if you click like and subscribe if you want to see other videos that we're going to be making as we go through. 2021 as we go through that, that next year. Let's roll the video. But if you watch this video to the end, I do have a pro tip that I'd like to give everyone, uh, which I think, well, yeah, I think you'll find useful. Anyway, the Peter McKinnon 35 litre camera backpack. Eight things that you might want to think about before buying it. First of all is security. Now, when I say security, you know, how secure can any bag be, okay? You know, whether it be uh, just being able to break a lock or slash it open or get into it. So, you know, when I say security, I'm referring to some of the features that they've added to this bag, uh, which are security features. So for instance, we have a pocket on the front of the bag here in full display of everybody which they can put their hands into if they can get it open very easily and take things out of. It's got a second little section in here, which is an RFID uh, screened pocket, presumably for putting things in that you, you want to protect, like credit cards and things like that. There is a very simple mechanism that is provided for this and two other zippers on this bag by way of this little loop. So let's get in front of the camera there. And you can see there's the loop. It's actually tucked inside normally, but when you're going to use it, you pull it out. There's the little loop. And then on these three particular um, compartments that we're going to be looking at, if you can see that, we're going to be looking at, they've all got this piece of hardware um, described by Peter and the merchandise as custom hardware. It's basically a, a aluminum tube, just got their logo on. But anyway, uh, I'm going to sl slip it through with this loop and just keep in mind here, I'm assuming this is how you use this. <laughs> There's no documentation that tells you how to use it. So now I can't, I can't unzip this and you know, it doesn't naturally pull through and I'm assuming that's what you do, but I don't even know why they did this. It's, it's, it's a total waste of materials and design, I think, because if I was going to put anything in here, that I want to get to when I get to the airport, for instance, I don't want to be fumbling with something like this. Now, maybe that loops there and you're supposed to use either a cable lock or a, a padlock. I don't know, but I assume that's what it's, that's the way it's supposed to work. I don't expect to have to pay, but buy additional accessories to make this thing function. So that's the function there. Now, here's the catch. And the reason why I say up, this was a waste of money, in my opinion. Why didn't they just, uh, they could put the pocket there. You can't see there's a pocket there. And just give it access through the inside. Maybe you'd open this and maybe there would be another zipper here. Make it so that, you know, an opportunist couldn't just put their hand in and find something. Uh, or you could just have a, a flap that's over, you know, the entrance to that so that it wasn't obvious when you slipped your hand in, uh, plus a zip as well. So, you know, I feel that uh, or, or they could have done that in an access from the outside and done this 
from the inside as well. But personally, I think they could just have done away with that and just done the access. And you might say, Tim, well, wait a minute, that's just as easy, but not really. I mean, you, you, this can be zip all the way down here. Um, you know, someone's got to zip it all the way up here before they get into there. You know, also it's, it, you can put a lock on this as well if you want to. There's a similar zip, much more heavy duty on the, on, on the, on the main compartment. So you could use a cable through the two, but anyway. Security, I'm, I'm not really convinced about that. I mentioned there were two other zippers that use this mechanism. There's the uh, side access, and I've actually locked mine inside. There's a, a loop inside. It's 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 kind of a big loop actually. So I'm not even sure if that's the, how, the way you're supposed to use it. In fact, I was able. I've, I've twisted the loop around a couple of times to tighten it up because when I used it the way it was. I could just pull this out from here, which made it totally ineffective. And then the last one uh, where there's one of these uh, pieces of hardware is on this compartment here, which is the laptop compartment at the back. And, you know, that's okay. But again, I, and I just feel that some of the mechanism would have been better, like a little, um, a built-in lock maybe with, with, a, with a combination. So there you go, security. Hope I didn't talk about it for too long. Next one, scuffing. This is something that everybody talks about in all of their videos. This material is, it, it, I, I, I don't know if the, the camera's picking that up very well, but you can see that there's marks on this. You can't rub them out. Uh, on the edges here, they're starting to scuff very easily. And I haven't actually taken this out of the house yet, believe it or not. Uh, I've walked up and down the stairs with it on my back a lot to make sure that it's, it's comfortable and it works for me, fully packed, but uh, I haven't actually had an option to take it out and use it. And I feel that that's, this is a premium piece of luggage and I feel that it should continue to look like that. And I, I don't believe that it will because of that. And I, I, I guess uh, to add to that, there's no special surface on the bottom here that's more durable than this for when you put it down, put it back down. So that's that's a concern there. So scuffing, great. And other people have mentioned that one uh, on multiple videos. Next one, number three is tie downs. Okay, so when I first got the bag, I looked at these loops, which are the tie downs, and I was a little concerned. At first I thought they were leather, but when I touched them, I realized they were a synthetic material, but I was worried about the durability of these, whether they might um, fray and, and rip at some time in the future. The similar similar tie downs on the side here. You can see I'm using this one, and it's it's actually one piece of material with a cutout, which makes me even more concerned because if you've got a cutout, then I'm assuming that that means there's some some fault point around the edge, unless it's been I, I don't know how it's been created that material, but there's. There's tie downs on, these are just straps. These are actually cutouts. Now with the bag also comes two of these tie down straps. I'm using one already for the tripod in the pocket on the side. These are pretty neat actually. They've got a little locking mechanism here after you've adjusted the length. They've got a quick release as well. And then at the end, uh, at both ends, we have these uh, little clips to put into the tie down loops. Uh, which go like that. Right, very good. And yeah, it does seem pretty firm. Uh, uh, again, it's just me, I guess, a little concerned about that. But you only get two of these, two of these straps. I'd like to see how much it costs to buy more. And the reason for that is when you take these off, you know, if I was to take this off and actually snag it or pull it, I'm worried a little bit about this bending and breaking that doesn't seem very sturdy obviously once it's once it's got the loop this this kind of latch on then it's it, it's very strong there's no question about it but as soon as you take that off this thing gets gets a little i don't know questionable so there you go loops and tie downs number four space so well, first of all let's look at the space that i'm using on the top this is where the, the clothing is supposed to go I do have clothing in here. You notice I've got it expanded up as well, which means that this is no longer suitable to go in an overhead bin. That, that's an issue for me, that if you have to expand this up to get what you need in here, then it's not meeting 
a requirement that I have that I want to be able to take this as a rollerboard on a, a carry-on on, on a plane. But let's open up and see what I got in here. We'll look at there at that in a minute. So I've got some underwear, I've got some socks, I've got three uh, t-shirts. I did have some jeans in the front here. Uh, they had to be taken out I needed to use them for something, but uh, to wear actually. Um, you also notice I have my gimbal in here. So I left a bit of space here. I put this foam on top because I was a little worried about some of the more kind of angle edges on here, maybe ripping the webbing for the expansion. So that's a concern if you do actually put gear in here. And I did see one guy who did a video, he put a ton of kit in here, slung it on his back and off he went. And I'm, I'm really interested to know how long his bag's gonna last actually, to be honest, because uh, you just a couple of rips in here and you've, you've I, I, I don't know what the warranty is on this, but surely putting things in here which aren't supposed to go in here probably don't, <laughs> aren't included in the warranty, right? So my gimbal had to go in here. And this is a WeBuild Lab. It's what, pretty small uh, gimbal. Uh, I could not get this in the main compartment. Now I do have an option where I might be able to get it in the main compartment, we'll come to that in a minute. So there you go, space. This is uh, less than 45 litres I believe with the ex with this expanded up, which it's cool if you want to use it, but not to take on a plane this There you go, number five, pockets and side axis. So I've already mentioned that we have one side axis on this side, and then on the other side, we have the, the pocket which flips out. It's, uh, it's held in place when you're not using it with a magnet. And it's, um, it's got some stretchy material here to put something, you know, you could put a water bottle in there, whatever. Um, and that's what I'm using it for. My, sorry, I'm using it for my, my tripod right now. So I mentioned that I might talk about other products. The Peak Design 45 litre travel backpack that has a side access on both sides and has a pocket, an expandable pocket on both sides. I don't know why Nomadic didn't do the same thing. It could be because of uh, patenting. They might, they might have a, a copyright or a patent on, um, you know, it'd be a patent, wouldn't it? On on the uh, the way they've constructed their, their particular access and uh, the pockets, in which case, obviously, that, they, that could be a good reason, but I feel that that falls short of that product in terms of the fact that you've only got one, one, one pocket and one side access. Now, like everyone else, I'm probably not going to use the side access. We'll talk about the reason why side access is not that great in a minute. But uh, let's move on to the next one, straps. So on the back, so on the back. Now I've um, I've stowed my 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 um, shoulder straps by sliding the, the belt where it should go, but I've done it the other way around so it didn't snag on the so it doesn't get stuck on the um, on the Velcro, and then by simply uh, threading these down into the loops that are created by folding it into three, I can kind of make these nice and compact. You might ask me, well, Tim, wait a minute, you've got to carry this, you're going to put it back, why, why would you need to do that? Well, to me, I want to be able to make it as low a profile as possible before I put it in the overhead bin, because when I pull it out, I don't want it snagging. And because if you think about it, if you've already had this on your back, this is, and you take it off your back, and you have used the belt as well, um, this is the side that's going to be down when you put it in the overhead bin, and as you can see, it's Obviously, this isn't this isn't unique to this bag. Okay, this also exists with other bags, but um, I feel that this wasn't really very well thought out. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't believe that this was by design to slide that in there and use it as a, a stove for the for these um, shoulder straps. Something I've noticed in other people's videos is they've, they've commented on the fact that they're they're not going to use the, the waist the waist belt, which really doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, this thing, this bag gets pretty heavy once you've loaded it up. And um, the whole idea is with this kind of system, especially when you've got these things also as well, uh, included as well, the whole idea is the weight is carried on your waist and uh, it leans against your back. And the whole idea of these straps, it actually pulls it onto your back so it fits the contour of your back, it's more comfortable. But the whole idea is the belt is supposed to take the weight. Anyway, that's a personal thing, I'm sure. If you want to, if you don't want to use the belt, then you don't want to use the belt. 
Uh, I've already mentioned rain cover, not included. Number eight is the main section. So let's get into the main section and see what I got in here. So we can finish out. Okay. In the, the top section here, I got my, um, I've, got, I've got an iPad, which I use as a monitor for my drone. I got the, um, the memory pack and the battery pack in here. I got some ND filters for my drone and some spare blades and an iPhone, which I use as a monitor for my main camera. In the main case here, or the main area here, which, you know, it's not chock-a-block full, there's still room to add more stuff. Uh, but I've got my main camera, which is a simple uh, Panasonic bridge camera. Uh, the reason why I mention that is that I don't have any lenses, okay? So uh, if I was to buy, if I was, if I was to acquire at a later date, something a little bit more um, flexible uh, uh, in terms of my main camera, and I wanted a range of uh, lenses to carry with me, maybe two or three lenses at the most, then I've got to start rearranging things because I don't have space for lenses right now. I've got a shotgun there, obviously that's where a lens could go instead of that. I've got the accessory pack, which I keep all of my action cam hardware in. I've got my, uh, uh, my controller for my drone. Uh, it's a Mavic Pro, the, uh, the original one, so I need to use this padding so I don't damage the joysticks. Got some brackets here for mounting up the iPad on the controller. Down in this last section, I've got some monopods and a tripod for the gimbal. And I got my Mavic Pro here. I got a Joby stand and I would put my action cam and monitor in this section here. So looking good so far. That's all I carry with me and that's all I need to carry with me. Uh, I may have to pack, I do have one charger down here, but I might have to put some of the uh, chargers in. I certainly haven't got my laptop power bank in here. Now, the reason why I wanted to take you in here was, let's look at this. Um, the depth of this uh, section here is uh, just uh, just over five inches. If you have a bag, oh, if you already have a camera bag, I recommend you check out how much depth you've got in that. I think you'll find you've probably got more. This is quite light, really, for a camera, a dedicated camera backpack. Normally that would be, uh, you know, inch, maybe maybe two deeper than that, if not more. Certainly one thing, if you've got a full-size camera and you've got a battery, battery expansion bolted on the bottom of it, you won't be able to get it through this side axis. That's one reason why some people said they're not gonna use the side axis. The other thing is, I did notice on one video, the guy was checking out different configurations of his camera, and it actually stood above this, this, this edge here. Now, he didn't have a big problem with that because obviously, you know, the, the, the top is flexible, and, and as long as you haven't got anything here that could damage your camera, it will flex to suit what you've got in here. So, you know, obviously you can pack a little bit more in here, but that is an issue. That five inch depth is kind of limiting. Now, as far as the construction of this, it's beautifully made. I mean, the, the padding, it's nice and plush. It's gonna last a long time. It's gonna protect your gear very well. The separators, uh, I did not bring mine in here. I've only used uh, four, se so four separators, two main ones and a small one here. The rest I haven't used, two in the day pack. Um, so, because really they, when you start putting the more separators, the less space you've got for kit, right? Um, so that's the main section, a little limiting, I think, for people who've got more gear than I have. Last thing I want to speak about really is the day pack. Yes, I bought it, <laughs> so I'm included in that price of $575. Um, it's, it's, it's a cool concept. I thought it was pretty, um, pretty a great idea when I saw it demonstrated by Mr. McKinnon. Um, quite frankly, I am considering taking it out and not using it. And the reason why I say that is because, so that the, one of the ideas of this was, uh, of the, the whole kit was, you can carry all your camera equipment, you can carry clothes for a couple of nights, you can go away on a, a, a gig, or it could just be a two day vacation, but right? you're gonna go away and do some shooting and you've got all your kit with you. And then when you get there, you can just use the day bag to take what you need. Well, guess what guys? When I go out, 
I'm terrible. I, I have to take everything with me. I need all those options with me. And so that's not gonna work. <laughs> that's pretty much the end of the story, really. I don't need a day back. And so that could just be me. Other people, they, that might work for them. Like, so for instance, you might be just going out just for a walk around, you're on vacation. You just wanna carry uh, somewhere to put your camera that's um, not necessarily secure, but at least padded and quite lightweight and to carry some other extra things. And, and that'd be fine if you're just gonna do some casual shooting, uh, but you haven't got anything planned specifically. But if you do, then you're gonna wanna take everything. And so why would you have that? Now, I also have another product here. It's called the Loctote. I've had this a couple of years now, actually. It's slash proof. Um, and it's waterproof and it's pretty 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 secure bag. Obviously there's no uh, there's no robustness in terms of a frame in the bottom of this, but I could put a box in the bottom of here, use it in exactly the same way. Um, I did use this, I used this in Southeast Asia uh, because uh, work, walking in uh, markets, uh, getting your know, bag slashed is pretty common. And so that's why I bought that. Um, wasn't cheap, but um, I, I can't remember if it was the compatible price of this, this cube. But obviously I can just drop that in there and close it. And, and so this was my other option for my gimbal. If I take this, this out and I use some separators and maybe put some padding in as well, probably get my gimbal in here and, and everything else that's already in here without using this bag at all. And then just lie this on top and use that as if I did want a day bag or something else that I needed to carry with me. So there you have it, guys. I, 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 all of these things are just uh, my feeling about the bag, uh, about the, the product. Um, as I already said, I, I, I bought it and I'm gonna keep it now. My, like I said, my wife has taught me into keeping it. But my bonus tip is, here we go, guys. It's kind of tacky, this is, I'm sorry, but so I'd, be, I'd looked at this uh, even when it was going through the Kickstarter program and uh, I, I, I was, you know, I'd, yeah, I'd like to get that. I'd like, that, that's, that looks like it will fit my bill. Um, but the price put me off a little bit. Yeah, I could have saved some money by uh, going through the Kickstarter. Uh, at the time I just uh, wasn't in a position to be able to do that. And so um, time went on and now it's on general availability and it's been like that, I think all, all of 2020. I can't remember what it was originally, came out of the Kickstarter. But my wife a couple of months ago said, you know, Tim, because she saw an advert for this and she says, you know, that's the bag you wanted, wasn't it? And I said, well, yeah, it was, but obviously we couldn't afford it at the time. She's, well, okay, you get it. Well, guys, here's the tip. When your wife tells you to buy something that you don't think you can really afford, you buy it. Yeah, I know. It's pathetic, isn't it? All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Um, do I say buy or not buy? That's entirely up to you as far as this bag's concerned. I really feel that the Peak Design 45 liter travel backpack can do this and more. Uh, and, and it does that by using the different little different cubes that you buy. And I can tell you that if you buy that bag, plus all of the cubes, the camera, the wash bag, the tech, tech organizer, the, a couple of um, clothing cubes, um, and two, actually two camera cubes, a medium and a small, to fill the area here. I guarantee it'll be less expensive than this, and it'll still do this, and it will do more, I think. So, that's a backpack. This is a camera case. That's the difference. This is a little bit more robust than the Peak Design bag. But Peak Design, you know, camera accessories is their business. So uh, I'm not so sure that Nomadic, that is their primary business, right? So um, with that being said, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. I hate to think how long that took. And uh, it certainly wasn't five minutes. Come back again, please subscribe and hit your like if you enjoyed watching that content.